This was Lidice before the Nazis wiped it from the map, murdering its men, enslaving its women in revenge for the death of Gestapo leader Reinhard Heydrich. Today, a new Lidice is born, Lidice, Illinois. Here in this new model township in Midwestern America, people who love liberty, many of them Americans of Czechoslovakian ancestry, gather to perpetuate the name of the martyred village. With patriotic and religious ceremonies banned in the old world, did say, they dedicate a memorial bearing liberty's eternal flame, voicing their remembrance in the words of Czechoslovakia's national anthem. Submarines invade Sydney Harbor. Their only victim, an old ferry boat converted to Navy use. Two torpedoes found their mark before the invaders were blasted to the bottom. Divers locate the invader craft near the harbor entrance. One by one, all four are raised to be salvaged for scrap. Some never had a chance to fire a shot, so quickly were they destroyed. Australian Navy men say these underwater raiders are bigger than the type sunk by the Americans at Pearl Harbor. At any rate, these are four deadly fish that didn't get away. Deep in the heart of the Canadian woods, an army of lumberjacks shoot the dangerous rapids of the Saint Maurice, on their way to start the greatest log drive in history. For 300 miles, the old river's choked with timber. Timber for the pulp and paper mills. Timber to be converted into chlorine, emulsions, and TNT for war. Dynamiters plant the charges that will free the jam, start it on its way downstream. For a jam allowed to pile up will often change the course of the river, leaving the logs high and dry. The few sputters, better hurry up, Mr. Lumberjack, and don't waste any time finding a safe spot. That blast is ready to go. And there they come, a sea of timber, 48 million logs of spruce and chuck pine. The specially built steel bottom alligator boat plows through the floating forest, the man in the bow poling to clear the way. At the sorting gap, lumberjacks separate logs bearing the trademark or stamp of each individual owner. Then up the giant conveyor belt, they travel to the mill. Stripped of bark and washed clean as a whistle, they're now cut to size. And there they go, shot through the air like torpedoes to make the world's greatest stockpile of logs for war. Out in the vast cattle country of California, hard-riding horsemen stage what Americans call a rodeo. Pitting his skill against untamed stallions and steers, each cowboy must hang on for 60 seconds to win the match. It's quite a trick, even for men born to the saddle. And when there's no saddle, well, that's what makes rodeo riding the most thrilling sport of the Western Plains.
Five years of the horrors of war finds China unconquered. Five years of murder and pillage by a ruthless nation bent on enslaving or exterminating a helpless people. Five million innocent civilian victims have perished. And yet, China fights on, its spirit undaunted. From battered Chongqing, blasted and rebuilt a dozen times, the Chinese Republic carries on the fight. Here, Madame Chiang Kai-shek, American-educated wife of China's leader, ministers to her people, inspiring them to even greater effort with her own unfailing courage. Mobilizing the young womanhood of the nation in unprecedented numbers, Madame Chiang symbolizes the spirit of the new China. Today, bombed-out war industries take to the fields, and rallying behind Chiang Kai-shek, an army of 26 million men. Here is China's answer to the invader. Behind the scenes in a U.S. war plant, rushing the manufacture of Army Scout cars. Here is a vivid example of how the famous American auto assembly line has been converted to speed equipment for war. American engineering genius for mass production, getting things done in a hurry. In a matter of hours, the finished cars roll off the line and are driven to ports of embarkation. Yankee soldiers call them jeeps, and the world will be seeing a lot of them. New to this war, they're the legs of America's motorized infantry. These are some of the U.S. Army flyers who bombed Tokyo. General Doolittle, who led the raid, sees General Arnold, Army Air Chief, decorate 23 of his men with the Distinguished Flying Cross. The citation states, they volunteered for this mission, knowing full well that the chances of survival were extremely remote. But they did survive, and they're ready to go again. <music> Biggest reward is the family reunion. And here's where the U.S. Army trained some of those flyers. Ground school for bombardiers. On rolling platforms equipped with practice bomb sites, they learn the secrets of expert marksmanship, study the outlines of potential targets. Now they're ready to take real bombs aloft for an actual test. Student pilots at the controls, student bombardiers on the alert. Their objective, outline of a city, drawn to scale. Down go the bombs, sped to their target by the finest bomb site in the world. Again they let go. No command needed now. This is the bombardier's big moment. Sample of United Nations air power in action on the battlefronts of the world. 